So it's now time, and I will call to order the. Is this a special meeting? Yeah, it's on Monday. Oh, I guess it is. I thought it was a regular meeting of the uh, Police Commission, 2359th. And first order of business is to accept the minutes of January 9th. So moved. And second, so they are approved. And now we have that. We have correspondence, Chief. Yes. Um, Lieutenant Shredder has participated in oral board examination for the position of sar sergeant with the Newtown Police Department. They sent us a very nice complimentary letter thanking him for his efforts. Um, we also got a letter of correspondence from a young lady uh, thanking officers, K-9 officer Silva and the area police force for their service. She's a third grader. Very nice letter. And there's also a um, copy of an article in your folder that states uh, Darien, Connecticut. According to the website Financial News 24 7 Wall Street, determined that Darien is the best town in Connecticut to live in, one of the safest communities in the country, as a matter of fact. So, uh, that we know. Mentions the secret are, is out. Mentions are very the secret is primary, out. Primary, <laughs> and uh, among other things, why it's so such a good community. It says Darien is one of the safest communities in the country. There were just 14 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. Of course, we don't have 100,000 residents in 2017. Um, so anyway, we uh, we are very happy that uh, the Darien Darien has been mentioned as being the fine town that we all know it is, yep. and yep. we should uh, also uh, give thanks to our officers who make it that way. We'll take credit for our part. You should. You should. Okay. Um, department activity. Captain Lawler has some uh, items for you. Okay. Um, January 17th, we had two reports of larceny in the mail from the post office on Corbin Drive. On the 17th, we had a stolen vehicle from Birch Road. There were no signs of forced entry. On um, January 22nd, we made a domestic violence related arrest. And also on the 22nd, we responded to an overnight burglary at a business. Our detective bureau is investigating that. On January 23rd, uh, we responded to four more complaints of stolen mail from the post office on uh, Corbin Drive. On hmm. um, the 29th, again, a larceny of mail from the post office. Now, is this, you know, the mail situation is disturbing, obviously, and uh, not, I don't want you to tell. <laughs> tell people how they're maybe doing this, but uh, is there anything, I, I suppose the only thing people can do to protect themselves is to go inside and... We did, we did, we did put out a press release on this, advising people that the best way to do it is to, to go inside and drop off their mail. Um, also, the, um, we have been in touch with the Postal Inspector's Office. They're going to be installing uh, theft resistant, although no, nothing is ever 100% hmm. theft resistant mailboxes at the Corbin Drive location. They've already installed one up at the uh, Heights Post Office, the Heights Road Post Office, mm -hmm. making them much more difficult to defeat. So that's one thing that they're doing. Um, did you have the arrest from here too? Yes, it's coming. We did make an arrest. Oh, you have? Oh, good. Okay. Does it look like there's one group that's doing this, or is it? It is, it's um, not just one group. They're, they're coming in from uh, Westchester County, New York City. Um, there's a very large contingent of individuals that are involved in doing this. So is this is this is a, a crime that's happening regionally? And yes. It's yes. not just, they're not just not picking their hand. No, Greenwich has had a big problem as well. Some, okay. other, some other towns also. Okay. 
Have there been any instances of personal mailboxes being at residences? Looked at? Yeah. Um, we haven't really taken any reports of that. Okay. It's mostly been the, the uh, at the post office. At the post office in the outdoor box. The outdoor yeah. box. Yes. Okay. Well, I think he had he had some information on an arrest that we made. Yep. Um, on the thirtieth, we responded to a motor vehicle burglary on Christie Hill Road. It was unlocked. Thirtieth, uh, we made an arrest for failure to appear. Again, on the thirtieth, we made an arrest for threatening. And on the thirty-first, an officer patrolling the area of Corbin Drive stopped a suspicious vehicle and observed several items on an unopened mail in the back seat. Ooh. After conducting an investigation, the three occupants of the vehicle were arrested for the mail theft. Okay. And where were they from? New Jersey. Okay. All right. Yep. That was some uh, really nice work by the oh, uh, Sergeant terrific. Johnson on the midnight shift. That's great. Okay. It's excellent. Very good. Um, again, on the 31st, we responded to five motor vehicle burglaries. All the vehicles were unlocked. Uh, February 1st, we had a stolen mail complaint. That stemmed from the 13th prior to the arrest. It was just recently discovered. And on February 2nd, we had a DWI arrest. Yeah. No, that's terrific that you that you guys got yeah. the people who were or who were doing the uh, mailbox stuff. That's, we had some shared that's scary stuff. We had some sh shared intelligence from um, outside agencies mm -hmm. that told us, um, gave us some pretty specific information, which good. led us to that surveillance. That's very good, thank you. Okay, then we have guardian entry. Yeah, in our, our guardian uh, software package that we use to know excellent service by officers, I just wanted to bring a few things to your attention that have been ongoing. Uh, Sergeant Kerry Isaac regularly gives uh, talks up at this up at Atria mm -hmm. um, on scams involving senior citizens and how seniors are targeted. Uh, so she asked Officer Chris Jimenez and Officer Flood uh, to give a presentation to the seniors, and it was very well received up there. Um, so kudos to Sergeant Isaac, Officer Jimenez, and Officer Flood for their great work that they've been doing up there to help out the seniors. Uh, also, once again, uh, Sergeant Isaac, Kerry Isaac, has been uh, instrumental in doing the Coffee with Seniors, uh, the Senior Center version of Coffee with a Cop. Um, mm. in 20, for a good part of 2018, Officer Jimenez, again, was mentioned as always being around to help and engage in dialogue with all the seniors, and they look forward to his attendance there. And uh, Lieutenant Marin has recognized uh, Officer Leslie Silva for all her hard work on the department's newly developed Coffee with the Cop program that we have at the various coffee shops downtown and around town. And in a relatively short amount of time, she's helped the department establish another way to positively interact with the community we serve. There's three things we wanted to mention to you about okay. that. Uh, Very good. Okay, old business, update on new firearms. Just to let you know, um, all of our firearms are in that we purchased and you guys approved the purchase of um, from the alarm fund. Lieutenant Shredders, the training division commander, has advised me that about 90% of the department has uh, participated in qualifications. And uh, just so that's just about everybody has qualified so far. So a few, few people left. It's going very well. Everybody really loves the new firearm. Good. Okay. New business. There's a, another bike race. Captain Waller has something on that. Yes, this is not a race. It's an event that they that goes through town um, every year. Um, the thing about this year is they're going to start in town from Middlesex to Middle School. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. Um, should be about 90 cyclists. Uh, they don't release them all at once, um, so it's not a big group going. And they agreed to hire um, two uh, people for, for traffic control as, as they leave mm -hmm. the school. So Where, okay. What's their route when they leave the school? Where do they go? Um, it's, a, it's a big, long list. They go all the way up uh, through Norwalk, um, 
and then back down to Darien. It's, it's about 25 miles. So but the, the route is pretty much the same through town. They do go through the beach area, but they have in the past without any problems. Mm -hmm. When is the event going to be? It is June 23rd of the Sunday. Okay. It's not all at once. They're stragglers. So you get a few bikes at a time. Understood. Okay. All right. Do we need to approve anything? Um, yes. Let's yeah. ask for approval. They're looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay, so we're in favor of that. And then Donnie, you have some traffic issues? Um, there's a packet in your folder for proposed tree removal on West Avenue, just west of Hollow Tree Ridge Road. The fact that this this tree is still there after all these years is kind of mind-boggling to me. Uh, clearly, you know, it's, a, it's an old tree, but at the end of the day, Ed Gentile is looking for LTA concurrence that this tree needs to be removed, and I fully support it. This tree here actually, you know, you could conceivably be operating lawfully and hit this tree because it is actually in the road. Oh. So, and the sidewalk kind of has to, was constructed around this tree. And any tree that has a delineator and a reflector on it clearly should be <laughs> in my mind. So he's just looking for LTA concurrence that this tree needs to be taken out from the sidewalk constructed to make it oh, I see, yeah. ADA compliant sidewalk. Yeah, I but, concur. Yeah, he's I'm, looking for concurrence. And uh, so do I. That's fine. Yeah, you can see that's that's interesting. The side, the tree is right on the sidewalk, which, yeah. of course, is similar to many of the trees on near Water Lane. Mm -hmm. Right. But this one goes into the road. Yeah, that's true. And it bears scars of being struck numerous times over no. the course of our career. So okay. I myself have done have done accident investigations there. I thought you you were yourself <laughs> in <laughs> running into the tree. Yes. No, not the same no, thing. I investigated <laughs> accidents. Okay. All right, then what do we have next? Removal of the tree. Uh, outside employment for uh, T.J. White is? Uh, yeah, Lieutenant White is requesting um, outside employment as a CrossFit coach, and it will not interfere with his employment as a Darien, with the Darien Police Department. He'll be doing law off duty. Okay, so I would approve that. Second. And uh, now we have the, the sad news. Yes. Uh, Captain Lawler has submitted his request for retirement. I'm just going to rip this up. <laughs> yes, can I not approve? I have a bunch of them ready to go. <laughs> I would like to just note he, it's been a pleasure working with John for 33 years. I was, I was like a rookie patrolman when he started here, so uh, we go back a long way. I bet you do. You're <laughs> I think you're one of the... Um, Two of the maybe five or six people who I wasn't involved in oh, appointing right. yeah, for yeah. this commission. That's right. So anyway, um, John, we're going to miss you. We know that. Um, I guess we have to accept your, but we do. We ex assume, assuming Kim concurs that we accept your resignation with great regrets. And again, on behalf of the commission, thank you for your service and I know you've got a few things on mind to uh, to do in the to do in the future. Thank you commissioner it's been a great honor to work at such a fine police department and with all the wonderful people that I've met over the years. So thank you. Okay. So do we have any can you have any new business or anything? I do not. To bring up Okay, so therefore we will uh, adjourn for and go into executive session to discuss personal matter.